You sit in a room only basking in the warm, glowing light of a cathode ray tube. Tiny sounds are emanating from the speakers. You're there playing your game and your brain is filling in the rest of the details and you think, this looks amazing. How can anything look better than this? And then you come back 20, 30, 40 years later and decide to replay some of those games because nostalgia is a very powerful and good thing. And so you load up the games and you've got them on your new LCD television. You're playing them and you're like, this does not look the same. You, you joke around with your friends and you're like, can you believe we thought these graphics were amazing? I mean, it's cool, the pixels are cool, pixel art is still a very awesome modern uh, form of artwork, but it just, it's so blocky. Can you believe we thought this looked amazing back then? Yeah, graphics have come a long way. The ray tracing and all these polygons flying everywhere, things look so realistic, the lighting is amazing, the shadows are amazing. The pixel art still exists, and it's not just because of nostalgia. A lot of it's nostalgia, but the art form still exists. Thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. You can get 25% off Windows and Office with coupon code TS25. So they've got Windows 10 Pro, they've got Home, you've got Windows 11, Office 2021, 2019, and this is the one I use, 2016, because it still works very well. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. So really your younger self is correct. Things actually did look amazing but they were not made to be played back on an LCD television. They were made to be played back on a CRT, and the technology is totally different. When an artist was designing a pixel art character or a scene with pixels, they would place the pixels on the screen, and then a CRT would not display the pixels back. It would display dots on the screen. That's the difference. Pixels became dots. Now let's talk just a second about the difference in technology from a CRT and an LCD, starting with the LCD. An LCD is comprised of tiny little light bulbs, little L LEDs, and you know, however many pixels you have, that's your resolution. So if you have 4K, well, you've got a lot of pixels on your screen. 1080p, that's how many pixels you have on your screen. Tons of little LEDs that turn on and off. This is way slower than a CRT because even if you can turn that pixel on really fast and then turn it off really fast, it, there's a little bit of a fade. That's what they call the gray to gray. So even if you can show many, many frames a second, if you can do 144 frames a second, you know, that's your refresh rate on your LCD. Well, yes, it can, it can show that many frames on the screen, but there's going to be a little bit of color bleed. There's going to be a little bit of what people incorrectly call ghosting, but we'll just go with it. A lack of of perception of motion and also most of the lcds have something called stay and hold technology where they're like you know if these pixels are about the same color from frame to frame we're not even going to refresh them so sometimes in a scene part of the scene will refresh but the part of the scene that's not really moving is not going to refresh so you'll see the same thing the same leds will stay lit on your lcd display for longer periods of time now let's talk about how a crt works crts have an electron gun inside. Some have three RGB, some just have one, like the Trinitron technology just has one really fancy electron gun that does all the colors. Now they fire an electron beam and that usually passes through some sort of a aperture grill or a shadow mask or some sort of filter to sharpen it up a little bit because, you know, we're just shooting light, that could be blurry when it hits your screen. So they have to sharpen and hone it. And then it hits some phosphors painted on the back of your screen. And that is what illuminates. The illumination is instant. We're talking like light speed. The on and off for that illumination is also instant. So whenever the electron hits the screen, it's lit up. Now, the electron goes across the screen all the time. It's just always drawing. It doesn't draw the entire thing at once. Like on an LCD, everything refreshes at once. The electron uh, beam is way faster. So it actually draws line by line, every dot on that entire screen. And it does this 
every time it refreshes. So if you have a monitor that refreshes 75 times a second, an electron gun will draw each line 75 times every second. So everything on your monitor is constantly moving, giving you a much better sense of motion. And that's the difference in the two technologies. Now, with the dots that are on the screen on a CRT, you have some artifacts because they're not as precise as pixels and different CRTs behave differently, but they all share a few things in common. Each dot will, when it hits the screen, there'll be a little bit of color bleed around the sides of the dot. And pixel artists knew this, and so they would sit there and design their pixel art, but they had a com you know, consumer grade CRT, and they would look at the artwork on that screen so they could see how it was going to be uh, displayed. And then they could adjust pixels around pixels. Maybe they wanted the eyes to be a certain color, but they wanted some shading around the eyes. So they would add some similarly colored pixels. And then when it was displayed on the CRT, those neighboring pixels, those neighboring dots, would bleed together and create more colors than the consoles could actually output, giving you a little bit of a gradation. So it was like a natural anti-aliasing, but it looks smoother to me than most of the anti-aliasing you can apply with your computer, with your just whatever game you're playing. It's some of the games nowadays are pretty technologically advanced, but the the Gaussian blur, the natural Gaussian blur that you would get from a CRT has this smoothness quality. So the pixel art did look smoother and it was it would vary depending on the quality of the set, the quality of electronics inside the set, and also the type of aperture grill that they use, or aperture grill or shadow mask, or the type of filter I suppose they would use. Now the Sony Trinitrons that we have here, this is too high. The quality is too high. It's too sharp. This does not look like a lot of the stuff from my from my childhood, but that's okay. It still has you know a bit of that quality. Uh, text is incredibly crisp, and the Trinitron is the brightest. So there's, there's other iterations that are not called Trinitron. That's the uh, aperture grill that Sony used in their stuff. Well, there's other stuff out there that's very similar in technology, like the Mitsubishi Diamond Tron. That's their version of the aperture grill that's extremely bright. Um, and there's merits for each one of those. And I'm gonna tell you in this video not to stress out when you're looking at different CRTs. Um, just if you're trying to recreate your childhood, maybe not, maybe don't go for something that's way fancier than what you had at home if you didn't have a trinitron at home with the overly sharp um, dots on the screen well then maybe you shouldn't get a trinitron now because it won't look the way you remember it if that's what you're going for we'll talk about quality in a minute because you know t high quality for a lot of games is not high quality if you know what i mean okay next we got to talk about scan lines because that's something that you would see on television sets not so much monitors and that has to do with the resolution a scan line is the line that you see on your screen with the color. Not the black line, it's the lit line. So the black lines that you see that are in between the scan lines are just that, they're nothing. They're just a black line. So when we talk about being able to see the visible scan lines, we mean how much they are separated. How much of a black space is there between each scan line? Now what determines how big of a scan line you have? The size of the television set. If you have a small television set like a 13 inch or a lot of the arcade monitors, they were also 15 Hertz. Um, and a lot of the arcade monitors were decent resolution and a small size screen. It was sometimes kind of hard to see the scan lines. They were so close together that you didn't see the black in the middle. So you couldn't see the individual scan lines. You would just see the picture as it is. You would see maybe a little bit if you look close, but from comfortable standing distance, it was hard to tell where one scan line ended and where the other uh, began. But on larger television sets, especially like when you get to 27 inch, like I have here with this Trinitron, you can really see the scan lines. In fact, the, the Trinitron the, the, with the aperture grill, it tends to give everything sort of a squared off look. It's, it's interesting the way it comes out. It looks really sharp, but it looks like we have scan lines going in all directions, just like these square shapes. Some people love that. I like it. I'm not gonna say that I love it. I love Trinitron monitors, Trinitron TVs are not quite perfect uh, in my opinion when it comes to recapturing the quality of old school pixel art. And that's the next thing to really ask yourself is what sort of set did you play on as a kid? What sort of look do you prefer? Do you want to be able to see each individual scan line with a lot of black in between? Do you want to have that look? Is that how you 
you like it? Is that how you remember it? I'm sort of somewhere in the middle. I like a little bit just because I feel like that the darker edges kind of makes it look a little more shadowy and I like that, but it's all completely up to you. Right, the next thing we need to talk about is the connection because that would change the separation of the colors and the overall clarity of the image that you would get on your CRT. Now we can simulate a lot of that nowadays with RetroArch and some filters. You can simulate the different connections, but it's not quite the same. How did you play as a kid? Did you have one of these ridiculous things? I haven't set all of these things up, so you're mostly just gonna see component, but we'll go through them all anyway. So that's gonna be the blurriest image. The separation of colors is not really gonna be a thing. I mean, a little bit, but some people like that look because it's, it's so blurry that when you're sitting back on your couch, it looks smooth and round and you don't see any of the individual pixels. All the dots kind of just blend together. Now you don't get as much shading as you do with some of the better connections because the colors are also not being displayed perfectly because it's all coming through that one connection. And that's also gonna be similar when you step up to a composite connection, which is just the RCA connection, the yellow RCA cable. And that's the one that did all the colors in one RCA cable. Then you had like your red and, and your either your white or your black um, for your audio, but still didn't have quite the color separation. Now, the argument that we're gonna have here, and you might be having with yourself, is should you go with S video or should you go with component, which is like the RGB or even SCART if you're in the UK or anywhere that does PAL, we can talk about that. Now, I know a lot of people are just completely gung-ho about component RGB and SCART. That's fine, but don't discount S video because S video is about as sharp. It's extremely sharp. You know, if you really, really want just a sharp picture, S video will get you there. And what's the difference between that and like an RGB connection? Well, RGB connections, they look amazing. They've got really nice saturated colors and you can see more of a separation in all the colors. But that's also the advantage of S video. Sometimes the colors are so separated with RGB and so perfect because you have the R, the, you know, the red, green and blue all with separate signals going to the television. So when you have it like that perfect, then you sometimes lose out on a bit of the shading that you would get and the bit of the shading that the original pixel artist intended. So I think S video might be the best way to go for a lot of people. In fact, when I plugged up my television with S video, it was, it was really hard to tell the difference other than the fact that I felt like the RGB was a little more saturated. So, on the Trinitron, I'm probably going to keep it with the RGB, but if you have a television that's that's not an aperture grill, maybe a little older, maybe it's um, not the most expensive, maybe it's like a mid-tier consumer set, if it has S-Video, you may be in store for a beautiful picture, especially with some of the older games, Super Nintendo, Genesis, 16-bit, 8-bit era, Turbo Graphics, and, and whatnot. So do not run away if you see a great deal on a TV set that has S video, especially if it's a curved tube. The flat tubes and also the aperture grills sometimes have what's called geometry problems where the, the lines and the levels are not straight. And that's something for another video, but just know that there are so many different rabbit holes you can go down. But the bottom line really is to not worry about it too much and just get something that's similar to what you grew up with as long as it has the, the correct inputs for what you want to do. I also want to note that what you're seeing on the screen in these pixel art games, it looks a lot better in person because of course you're watching it back on, um, you know, an LCD television, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is that it's very difficult to capture a CRT well with a camera uh, because once you zoom in, you start to the, you start to see the underlying grid a little bit that your eyes, your eyes don't see that. You see like there's some weird lines sometimes on the screen or like almost like a moray effect. You don't see that with your eyes when you're sitting there playing on your on your CRT, but you do see that sometimes with the cameras, depending on how it's focused. Uh, and sometimes you'll see a weird band go across the screen, you know, like it looks just like it's weird. And that is another weirdness from from trying to record things. The camera set to 30 FPS. We're playing the game at 30 FPS, but still somehow it's not perfectly lined up. I don't know why it normally is. And it's usually pretty close, but sometimes you'll see a band go across the screen. Now to show you what like a mid-tier um, or a low-end set looks like. I do have a Magnavox set, or I did have a Magnavox set, and I had it back before I really knew how to do a good job at recording CRTs. So excuse some of the weirdness, but you can you can already see 
how the dots on the screen are a lot blurrier when compared to the Trinitron. And I actually liked the way it looked. I loved the way it looked. I would have kept it and not even purchased a Trinitron. Something was wrong under the hood of the Magnavox. It was producing the loudest coil whine I've ever heard. And I know some television sits uh, can be fixed, but it is dangerous. So I was like, you know what? Someone else has a Trinitron for sale right now. I'm just going to part with this. And the person who sold it to me took it back for and gave me my money back because he was like, oh, I'm really sorry about that. So if you're watching, you're awesome. Thanks very much for taking the money back for the Magnavox. I kind of miss it because I liked the blurrier quality. It, it looked amazing, but it's hard to see from the video footage that I have. Sorry about that. All right, so let's say you don't have you don't have room for a CRT. You don't have room for one of these. <laughs> it's just not going to work out, huh? You don't have to have a CRT, but I would still recommend playing your emulated games with some filters. Now, don't play them with just like some generic like blurring filters, though that can get you a little bit of the way there. You want to play with some actual CRT filters. And RetroArch has some very good CRT filters I can teach you, if you like, in a separate video how to really set that up to make it look a lot more, you know, a lot more like it used to look. But I actually sat down beside my Trinitron and created a CRT filter that looks a lot like the Trinitron. It's not perfect, but it gets you like 80 or 90% of the way there. You're not going to have the pure fluidity of motion either, but it really does a good job to get much closer to what you remember in your head as a kid. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll put up a separate video on easy mode. Otherwise, I can put a couple links in the description to show you where to get these shaders uh, and how, how to turn them on. It's stuff that you do in RetroArch, so it might take a couple of minutes, but the payoff is so worth it because it makes the games on your LCD look a lot more like they're supposed to look. I've just decided it's CRT month because that's what I want to talk about. I don't really feel like making videos on other stuff right now, so it's CRT month. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know, did this pique your interest? If you're not going to get a CRT, which totally fine, you don't need to get a CRT. Uh, let me know if you're going to be trying some of those CRT filters like I mentioned. So anyway, we'll talk about all that in a different video. Uh, as for now, we have these. See this? This is the, that's my script over there. But this is the Fennec Wireless PC controller. And I love these. That's why I use it mostly because the analog sticks, to me, they feel better than the Xbox or the PlayStation analog sticks. We can argue about the D-pad. PlayStation might feel a little better from my hands with the D-pad, but I love this. It's also wireless and it's 2.4 gigahertz, which means you need line of sight with your USB, but there's no latency like there is with Bluetooth. So. This is how I play all of my emulated games when I'm playing them on the PC. If I'm playing them on my Wii, I use a regular Super Nintendo controller. But this, I'll put it on sale in honor of these CRT uh, videos. And the coupon code is Take Control. So head over to EasyMode.com, grab yourself a, one of these, maybe a mouse too if you want to. But yep, Take Control, half price. See you over there at EpicPants.com.